Happy Halloween. Happy Sam Hain. Um, should have probably been wearing orange today or black, but I didn't think about it. I'm going to start with spraying myself. Mmm, some really juicy spray. And I've been off for today's day 10. And I don't want to really say off because it's never off. I took a couple days off to recharge, visit somebody down the beach. But um, what I'm doing is I'm planning some classes and doing some products that are going to be going out. So I'm very excited about all of that. And uh, so I go back to work tomorrow. So I hope you've been noticing how this energy has been, I want to say all month and also this week. It's been building to today and that energy is amazing. So just know that this is a time if you're looking to talk to your loved ones, they're around. You know, people often think, oh, how am I going to do that? I can't do that. Of course you can. Who do you think they want to talk to more than you? Do you really think they want to just come through me or anybody you know that's a medium? No, they want to work with you and through you. So it's important for you to know that and stop today to meditate and to just tune into that energy. Set the stage, sage your room, sit. Put pictures out of those you would like to communicate with. Clear your mind. Be in a place of saying, okay, this is where I'm going. I feel good about that. I feel like, you know, don't doubt it. Once you say, set sacred space, you've cleansed, you've done all of this, and you sit down with an intention. My intention is to talk to my mother. You have a picture of her or an object of hers that you want to hold. You close your eyes and you get quiet. And you start by meditating and creating the stage. You ask your angels and guides to come in. And don't doubt it. Because once you set sacred space, they know that. And they're waiting to come in. Some of you may be very um, torn. If it's a new, especially if it's a new or somebody that was close to you, you might have a lot of grief still really present with you, even though it might have been a while because nobody can tell you how long you should grieve for or whatever. So the grief energy itself is heavy. And so when you're trying to communicate, you want to be in this place of allowing that energy to live so you can hear or feel or sense and, you know, some people always say, well, do you, do you hear that voice audibly? Not everybody does. Some people will. Other people will be like, I'm making this up. I know I'm making it up. You're not making it up. You're in that place of allowing. And you should trust it. Because with the energy and the veil between this world and the next being very see-through, you know, it's almost like cellophane. You can do what you normally don't think you can. And for some, they just want to use this time as an honoring to the spirits in the spirit world, which there's nothing wrong with that. You can set a beautiful altar and have pictures of everyone on there. We've talked about it before, but this is the time to do it. So utilize the energy of today. Try something new. If you're used to sitting there and you're being quiet and trying to get messages and nothing's happening, try something new. See what happens, how you're going to challenge yourself. You know, and if you know you're visual, then you might get a glimpse of light or feel that they're over here. Or if you're auditory, you may hear something. Or... If you're a feeler, you may feel. Last night I was watching TV and I, do, I am visual and a feeling person.
but they weren't showing me who it was. I could just feel a man's presence sitting in the chair watching me last night. And I had no clue who it was because I wasn't getting anything on it. But I knew there was somebody watching me. Gerard was in bed. And I knew that a male energy came in. And um, when I asked if he wanted to speak, I didn't see. And nothing was said. And it wasn't a negative energy. It was a positive. So I was like, okay. And I just went about my business. But there was, you know, sometimes they check in on you. So it's important to know that. All right, for the last Sunday. And we're going to start with this one. For the last Sunday in October. Getting ready for the winter months coming in. Just a reminder, save the date on um, for my winter solstice. It's December 18th on a Saturday. I think it's the 18th, whatever that Saturday is. At the same place I've been having events. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And you, most of you know about it, but save the date. You will love it because there's a lot that goes on and it's worth every dime. Not because it's me. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you get for going. And we're also going to have some readers there. It'll, it'll be wonderful. All right. Look at this. Um, this is from the Secret Language of Life. Nothing has gone wrong. The yin and yang, the balance all around. Nothing has gone wrong. How many times do we think something happens in our life and we're like, spirit must be mad at me. What did I do wrong? How come that didn't work out for me? And you may never see why something doesn't work out or why it takes so long to work out because you won't know till many years later, often. That's what has happened to me. That's been my experience that it's like, oh, if I didn't get divorced from this person, I wouldn't have met this person, which is the love of my life. Or if I didn't get, this is just an example. If I didn't get fired from my job, I would have never found what I really want to do. That's my purpose. So sometimes you have to really thank God for unanswered prayers or, you know, to see what's going on. Do I want, I want two from here. It's tucked way behind. Ooh, soul craft. Look at the power in this card. Wow. So right away, what I'm noticing is they all have crosses. The, the two cards have crosses of light in them, which I think is fabulous. And there's so much. One is just bright white light and the other is golden light. My two favorite lights, they're bright. So I already kind of said nothing has gone wrong. But soul craft, this to me looks like a form of a Merkaba or something where you're traveling from one place to another. So this week, if something, if you can't move the river this week, there's a reason for it. Nothing's gone wrong. An obstacle launches new loving requests. In the last few days, a change came out of the blue. It may have felt like your body and mind moved through a crack in reality as your life altered course so suddenly. Deep within, you have been craving change and this situation brings new and different experiences to your life. You may be feeling a little lightheaded and dazzled by the brilliance of this expanded version of you but you are doing so well. It is now time to catch your breath, settle in to your new outlook. This is an opportunity to look at your thoughts, ideas, and your reactions to your potential success. As you become aware and implement change, you can rise above the limits people or situations have placed on you. This card depicts the trigram of the I Ching, the book of changes with a yin yang symbol. This is a reminder that everything changes. Nothing can exist on the physical plane without its opposite and neither 
is superior to the other. You can't stop anything that is manifested, but it can serve as inspiration to create new paths aligned with your soul truth. Focus on what makes you smile. That's nice. All right, let's look for the next one. Soul, here it is. Soul craft. Life happens from you, not to you. Look, we've got a theme here. The thoughts, ideas, and topics you incessantly discuss are crafting your life. So focus on ones that make your heart smile. You are ready to receive answers from your soul about any topics, thoughts, or ideas you want to change. Be wise in your crafting and the path of least resistance will call you. Different soul vibrations will inspire different actions. If you are feeling tired, your, your inspired action will be to rest or sleep. If you are feeling love, you will be inspired to do things that emulate love in your life. We all sense with our soul, but often override it with the rational mind. Trust your soul is bringing you the most up-to-date information. Nice. I think we'll bring the fairies in next. Fairies, we want to lighten this week up. What do you have to say to us? Romantic partner. I thought this was so funny. When my granddaughter was real little, maybe four, and I used to pull these cards out, she'd point to this and go, Mosquito! Because <laughs> he's got wings. She thought he was a mosquito. I love that. So romantic partner. Make music. I'm going to pull this last one. Environmental awareness. Okay. It says, a new romance is coming your way, either a new partner or a revised revival of passion in an existing relationship will delight you now or in the near future. By drawing this card, the fairy realm wants you to know that a new wave of romance is coming your way. This could manifest itself in a number of delightful forms, such as meeting a new partner who makes your heart sing with excitement and passion, or rejuvenation of a waning romance with a current love. Perhaps the new romance will take the form of an exciting getaway, such as a tropical vacation. Oh yeah, that's all we need right now, for sure. Um, fairies love romance, and they know the importance of feeling passion in a relationship. Ask them to help you with imaginative ideas to create more romance in your life. They remind you that romance is a state of mind and it involves playfulness and creativity. Sometimes when we're stressed, we crave romance the most, yet we may not know how to experience romance. Let the fairies help you relax, allowing the inflow of romantic ideas to easily come to your mind and also giving you the energy to put them into action and enjoy them to the utmost. Affirmation, I'm a romantic person. I release any fears that I may have about giving or receiving love. So be on the lookout this week. The make music to me is just, you know, music takes you out of funks, you know. Music, just putting on good music, uplifts your vibration. Express yourself with music. The fairies urge you to sing, play a musical instrument, tap your fingers, or crank up the stereo. Music lifts the soul to new heights. It alters your mood and your outlook. The fairies play music at their celebrations because they, they know of its value. By drawing this card, you are guided to surround yourself with music, any type of music that will be your soul's appropriation. The fairies are energetically fond of joyful, fast-paced music because it stimulates their mood. Play music yourself. Have fun playing around you for the next week. Notice how your mood and energy elevates. You may find that you are drawn to new types of music 
or to a genre of music that you enjoyed a long time ago, make note of any songs that you repeatedly hear on the radio or in your mind. The lyrics or the memories evoked by the song could contain a message for you that will answer a particular question you have. Deep into my soul, I now accept and experience the healing powers of music. Um, I always play a little game with my loved ones. There's a certain radio station I listen to in the car, and when I want to talk to them and get a message, I wait for the radio to come. Like if, a mu if, if I'm on that station, and all of a sudden it starts with, you know, a, a song's already on, that's not my message. I wait for the next full song to come on, and I ask for a message from whoever it is, my angels, my guides, or whoever. And it's bizarre because sometimes you'll be on a rock station and you'll hear a disco song or something and it's perfect what you hear. Environmental awareness. Just looking at this, it's like, you know, um, I'm reminded that the creatures around us that try to help us so much are our domestic ones and otherwise you know, we are responsible to help them out, especially in the winter. They may not have food or whatever, and you want to pay attention to that. And they're going through lots of changes just like us, only they don't have the wherewithal to know where's it coming from. The fairy kingdom is very concerned with the health of Mother Earth. By drawing this card, the fairies are recruiting you to become involved in environmental matters. You have the power to make a huge impact on your planet. Earth is a living, breathing being, and the fairies are calling upon you to help her. Your contribution could include recycling, picking up trash while on a nature walk, switching to environmental friendly cleaning products, getting involved in an environmental protection group, becoming a vegetarian, or celebrating your or educating your children about the frigidity of nature. When you spend time outdoors, mentally ask the fairies for guidance on how to make your special contribution to Mother Earth's well-being. The fairies will give you answers in the form of thoughts or feelings by arranging a synchronistic opportunity or by helping you to see unique talents to help educate others about environmental concerns. It feels good to nurture my planet with loving care. Very nice, okay. One card from the Wisdom of Avalon for everybody for the week following Halloween. Joy! This is a wonderful card, all in nature and It says, the sacred journey awakens. Wow. Looks wonderful. So find some time when you're trying to help nature and everything else this week. How can you have time to do something that you really want to do? All right. This marks a time for celebration. This portends the joyous completion of a project, the attainment of a goal, or the end of a long journey. When you're thirsty, this marker promises that you'll find a well. When you're cold, a blanket. When you're hungry, nourishment. Joy has another aspect. For not only does it celebrate receiving blessings from fruits of our labor, but it's also about the sharing of it. Joy celebrates itself. Its very essence radiates beauty and well-being. Like the spring sun breaking through after a long and gloomy winter, joy reminds us to be grateful for all the gifts of life. Joy bestows the blessings of happiness. You truly have reason to smile when this marker appears on your path. Nice. And we're going to do Earth Magic by Stephen Farmer. Just one. Vision Quest. 
So, you know, every season change, I kind of do that. I check back in to see are my goals still what I want to follow? Because, you know, don't think it's some uh, heroic thing that if you made that goal, you got to follow it through the end. If it's not something you're interested in or reevaluate and go on a vision quest, what's next for me? What is important? Wouldn't I like to go there, hop right in that picture, Sedona? <laughs> okay. Vision quest. Okay, how come I can't find this? Okay. Okay, this is bizarre. Oh, I was supposed to be looking for desert. Okay, never mind. Desert, page 44. In this, in this and climate zone, oh, in this arid climate zone that we call the desert, Images shift and change throughout the day, yet always maintain a sharp and defined presence. Those hardy species of flora and fauna that have found a home in the desert have adapted over eons to the relative harshness. That's a strong characteristic of these lands. Throughout history, we've passed down many stories of people wandering in the desert. Often they're about religious figures and ascended masters who have journeyed there and returned to their people with remarkable visions. The desert is an ideal place to seek a vision or to allow a vision to come to you. This quiet place of peace is an environment that's conducive to the solitude required to have this type of profound experience. Spending time in the nature or this reason without usual accoutrements of the civilized world can prevent survive oh no could present survival challenges or at least seem to this could rightfully be called a spirit quest where th the, through steadiness in this seemingly bleak environment it becomes possible to receive direct guidance from spirit internally and in the world around you it says a vision quest is a process by where you spend a few days in the wilderness alone. Typically, you carry only water and some sacred items with you, and you spend most of the time praying or meditating. Um, many who have completed a vision quest assert that it is a powerful and even life-changing experience and report vivid and profound revelations. It is said that the desert does not lie. So partaking in this can help you discover the truth about your purpose or at least give you some clues. It is time for you to go on a vision quest. Designate a place in nature in which to dwell for a couple of hours or a few days. Yeah, I think we have to um, kind of, <coughs> excuse me. I think we have to kind of um, make that fit for our environment. We're at the end of October, it's not the middle of summer, so maybe going out for a couple hours. But what it's asking us to do is wherever you go, if you have a question, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, if you have a question, whatever, this is one of the most powerful cards. By drawing it, whatever other messages you may have received are amplified threefold. Interesting. And the last card comes from the Star Temple. One card, Star Temple. I have a hard time spreading these ones that are really cardboard. And what 
like that one. The storyteller, together. Intention, I am the narrator of my life. Look at her. I love she's dressed so feminine she's got a mirror in her hand she's got stars all behind her she's very galactic nice so this week star words plan reframe pursue you create your own reality with your thoughts feelings words and actions Together reminds you to ensure that you are of high vibe and intentional. Everything is interconnected, cooperative, and purposeful. You have the free will to create with your mission in mind. Exemplify your higher calling and divine mission with determination. Do not hypnotize yourself to create from your unconscious limiting belief. Be empowered in the sacred now to reconsider your accepted reality. I love how it says that. Be in the sacred now. So this week, a lot going on. It feels like it's going to be a real big week. You know, whatever happens, it's part of the plan. You're following your soul. You might meet new interests. You're going to pay attention to the music. And two cards about getting in nature, the environmental awareness and the vision quest whether it's even just going for a walk or whatever. And then you've got the joy card. Find a little time for some joy in your life. And you create your own reality. So make this week a great week. I love all of you. Mwah! Use this energy wisely today to create. Bye-bye.